Hi, welcome to the Real Estate of Mind Show. We're your hosts, Glenn and Amber. Hey, everybody. And uh, we help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing. We have a great show lined up today, so let's jump right in. So I absolutely love it when we get your questions because it makes us feel like we're actually giving you value. You know, you yeah. ask and we answer. So today is all about you. We've got a bunch of questions here that we're going to jump right into. Okay. So first question says, hi, Glenn and Amber. My husband and I just flipped our first house and we have to sell for 220000 just so we can break even. Um, we've been on the market for over two months with no showings. What do we do? We can't lose money on this. We're super stressed out, not sleeping, and I swear my husband's losing his hair. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I understand what that's like. So help Janice. Okay, Janice. So <clears throat> we have good news for you and we have bad news for you. So we've certainly been in similar situations. You oh, know, yeah. If you do real estate long enough, that's going to happen to you. You do enough deals when we talk to some people and say, have you ever lost money or been really close on a deal? They say, no, no, no never. I say, well, you haven't done enough deals yet. When you start doing hundreds, you know, it, it happens. Yep. So the first thing I'll tell you is that you can challenge yourself to spin what is potentially bad news into good news to, so that, you know, challenge your thoughts there. Are there other creative solutions that you can come up with? Maybe a different exit strategy. Um, you know, you might not profit as much up front, but it might be a better long-term fit for you. Yeah, the truth of the matter is the market doesn't care what you have to get for a house. I'm sorry to tell you that, but the market could care less. The market pays what the market pays. A house is only worth what someone is willing and able to pay for it. So that's number one. It's it's also a very common rookie mistake. Yeah. And I'm not sure if you're a rookie or where you fall in here, but it's a common rookie mistake to over improve a house based on your own personal taste, yeah. based on what you would like. And that's, that's not uncommon for people to do. So um, don't beat yourself up too much about it. We try and say in our house, we're either gonna, you know, we, we don't say win or lose, we say we're gonna win or learn. So try and learn from, from what's gonna happen now. So we'll talk to you about some ideas how to get through that. Okay, so I talked to you about the bad news. Let's talk about the good news. Accept that you're going to lose money. It's a hard pill to swallow, but the faster you can swallow it, the less money you'll lose because yeah. you can make a decision and move on from there. Um, if the, we don't know if we're going to lose money or not. It depends, right. depends on how much you have into the house. But Maybe you, say, you just don't make as much. Just reading between the lines, you may have to lose some money right. on this. You may have to. So if that's the path you want to take, you want to ask yourself, do you want to lose a little bit or do you want to lose a lot? Or if you're not losing money, you know, do you want to make less? Or if you really hold out trying to get you know the market to turn up or try to find that one buyer that's going to pay that much for it, you might lose, end up losing a lot more because you've held on to it for so long. So yeah. again, take that pill, swallow it, make a, a decision and move on. Get out as soon as you can because every day that you sit there, you are losing money and you don't want to do that. Time yeah. is money. Um, consider a different ex exit strategy. You know, consider yeah. maybe turning the house into a rental property, maybe even turning it into an Airbnb. We've done that with a few of our properties lately, and it's yeah. been absolutely f fantastic. There might be options for you to refinance the property if you are going to go that route. And, um, you know, that, that's potentially a really, really great exit strategy. We had a house in a uh, local area to us called Saratoga, and, and uh, we bought this house with the anticipation of making about a $60,000 profit on this house. And <clears throat> we've done videos on it in the past, and condensed the story down, we had a nasty neighbor that turned us in for, you know, every time, every, literally every time a truck of ours would pull on the on the property, he'd call the, call the code enforcement. He was very litigious. He wanted to make sure. Turns out the neighbors hated him, but, and he moved away. But he caused a lot of commotion in the meantime. He demanded that we have the sheetrock that we had put in the dumpsters tested. And so they had it tested and it had asbestos in it. <sighs> So I had quotes anywhere from about $40,000. Uh, it be, started out being 30 and wound up being like 40 something, <clears throat> up to $120,000 to have that remediated. Well, that sucked. My whole profit margin was 50,000 on that job. So we had to pay 40,000 plus the extra holding time, 40,000 for the asbestos removal plus the extra holding time. We were going, funny Funny you say that, our, our selling number was around the mid-200s. Mid and we decided, we, we, we stepped back and found another exit strategy. And the exit strategy was to turn it into an Airbnb. It's in an area that demands very high prices, especially during track season. And we can make thousands of dollars, like probably over five figures a month for a couple of months in Saratoga. So the exit strategy is going to wind up being a much better player long term, but we were able to step back and take a look at it. So you have to find those so, those solutions. Yeah, and over 600 houses that we've done, <clears throat> we've never had a situation like that where we had to have no. the sheetrock tested for asbestos. No, for that was a... <laughs> for crying all out. Love that guy, and he moved away, yeah, so anyway. Well, thank goodness he moved away. Yeah. 
So um, the great thing about real estate is that there are so many options. You know, there's that saying, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I don't know who's skinning cats, but you know, there, there's, don't get so, you know, laser focused on one exit strategy that you're missing the potential for, for other avenues to make it a really win-win deal for you. Um, you can you can definitely turn what could be a bad deal into a good deal by exploring your other options. You know, if we had a coach in the early days, you know, there were, there's, we no, definitely yeah. made some decisions early on that where we may have, you know, totally. not made as much money or lost money, where if we had a coach to kind of help totally. us walk us through that process, we would have made so many better decisions. Yeah, yeah for sure. So if you're <laughs> like Janice, you know, unfortunately, like I said before, the market could care less what you have to sell a house for. The market pays what it feels it's worth, and that's it. No more, no less. That's true for anything you sell in life. Yeah. You think about it, when you go to buy a car, you pay what you think it's worth. So you go to a blue book value, you look, you pay what it's worth. If someone's, someone says, no, I, I have to get 10,000 more for this car, you're gonna say, I don't care what you have to get for it, I'm willing to pay what it's worth. And so that's what it is. So yeah. um, don't have such tunnel vision, <laughs> all right? Don't have such tunnel vision on, I've gotta flip this house, I've gotta make this sale, and you've gone two months without selling, don't go so much tunnel vision that you miss the bigger picture, which is other opportunities that might come your way. So be open to other ways to profit from that same deal, and that way you can turn a loser into a winner. Hope that helped, Janice. All right, our next question. <clears throat> Hi, y'all. All right. It starts out with y'all. So, you know, a that's a thing. Southern person. Southern. I'm from Texas originally, so I always like the y'all. It's good. Uh, my husband and I started this flip together, and we are arguing over all the time. Things are slipping through the cracks. How do the two of you do it successfully? We don't want to get divorced before we actually make money and flip a house <laughs> together. Thank you, Lara. <laughs> so, okay, Lara, <clears throat> the stories we could tell you about when we first started. <laughs> we don't have enough time today or ever. <laughs> yeah, nor do we want to go back there even in our minds no. because it's honestly a miracle we didn't kill each other. <laughs> but we did figure out how to solve it. Yeah. That's the good news. It's amazing what $25,000 in four years of therapy will do for you. So worth it. <laughs> Best $25,000 ever. Not even kidding, by the way. So that's that's how we worked it out, but let's let's continue on. Yeah. So um, in the beginning, we were wearing all the hats. I think that was probably the most, that was the hardest thing that we were doing everything. You know, I was doing the, the buying of the houses, the selling of the houses, the accounting, the, um, you know, helping everyone with renovations and buying materials and all the things that you have to do, you're wearing all the hats and it's very challenging to judge all those things at the same time. Um, as your business grows, you'll start to learn how to delegate and how to build an actual business out of it so you're not going crazy. But that's, um, that's, that's what causes problems. And many times, most times, when you start this, you're doing it alongside of a full-time job and you've got a full-time family and everything else. So all of a sudden, you're fitting something new into a schedule that was already packed and now you're gonna fit more into it, so. Yep, so number one, Here's what we're gonna tell you to do, and this helped us so much when we did this. Totally. But number one is define your roles. You know, when we first started, it was just everybody was doing everything, everybody, Glenn and I. <laughs> Um, but we didn't really know who was responsible for what. So that's why things started slipping through the cracks. But well, when we defined our roles. You talked to a contractor, I talked to a contractor. Right. You know, the same, we had the same, com we were having the same conversations. And I, you know, I, I spent an hour talking to that guy. Well, I just did too. We had a lot of overlap. And, and, and there yeah. was just, things were slipping through the cracks. And then you start playing the blame game. I thought you were going to do that. No, I thought you were going to do that. And when things start slipping through the cracks, you start losing money because that makes time and go you on. you start doing this. Yeah. yeah and it, just, and it, it, it's not a fun thing to do. That doesn't, doesn't go well. So define your roles. You're responsible for ABC and I'm responsible for XYZ. You know, who's gonna do the project management and the scope of work and the design and who's gonna handle the buying and selling and negotiating yeah. and you know, whatever your roles are. And Glenn and I actually had um, non-traditional roles. He did all the buying and selling and negotiating yeah. and I did the project management and dealt with the contractors most of the time. Although I gave you the crap work, <laughs> the septics and the, the literally literal the crap work. work. The sewers, the septics, the furnaces, all the all the nasty work. That's what I got to do. But so, anyways, that was so our roles. Whatever your roles are, define those so that you know what you're responsible for. And that's going to keep things from falling through the cracks there. Um, consider a veto policy. That's been really big for us. That so. was big. Yeah, having the veto, knowing who was going to say we could, either one of us could walk into a house anytime and just yep. say, if if I knew the numbers weren't going to work, period, I would just say, I got a veto. I have a bad gut on this. Trust your gut. Or if I walk in and I say, no, this floor plan, there's just no way I can make it work. This is not going to be appealing to a buyer or nope you know, for any reason, or the next door neighbor's house was a total dump and you know, whatever, whatever it is, having that power of veto 
was really big for you us. Can nego we, we always say we, you can come back and present your case once or twice, but if veto comes up two or three times, that's it, that's, that's a veto. Respect that and walk away. Yep. So number three was don't, think, don't take things personal, which can be really challenging because if you are doing this on the side of your full-time job already or you've got a family, you know, you're tired. You know, this is an extra side hustle for you. So you might be tired and a little bit sensitive. Try not to take things personal. Um, and I, I didn't have this in my notes, but one thing that I think has also helped us a lot was um, come at things as a team. And yeah. what I mean by that is sometimes you can get, you know, so kind of like stuck in a corner and you want your way to be right or his way to be right or whatever it is. But if you just stop and stay solution focused instead of focusing on the problem, who's right and who's wrong, that, that's the problem. Focus on a solution. Don't worry about the problem. Just focus on the solution yeah. and go from there. And, and yeah. that, I think, is a huge piece of advice for anybody, whether you're a husband and wife or brothers or mother, son, or whatever it is, yeah. whatever partnership that you have, is always focus on the solution, not the problem. We had to do all these things, right? We had to figure all this out. We're speaking from, from direct knowledge. We've done all Years these things. Years of experience. Years of experience. And one thing I would add to all this is that don't bring your own crap to the fight. Now, what I mean is if you're fighting about what color the floor should be or what contractor you should hire for a certain job or if you should sell the house traditionally or through an agent and you're you're getting into a conversation about that but this morning you were arguing because you know husbands you left the house a disaster when you left and you were fighting and bickering about that and you bring that fight to the floor discussion, guess what happens to the floor discussion? It becomes about nothing about the floor. You're just fighting to fight. So you can't do that when you're- uh, and nobody you wins this. there. No, that's, nobody that's wins. That's a lose-lose situation. Does. So come at things as a, as a team. Yeah, team. Once, once we figured all that out, it totally changed our business and changed our relationship for the better. And it's been, been great ever since. So. Yep, absolutely. Okay. You. Oh, so Lara, you've got this. You know, you loved each other enough to get married. <laughs> So, so figure out a way to make it work. Um, it, working together does bring a different element to your relationship. So it's you know it's something you may or may not have ever done before. So there are there is some navigating of those waters to make it work. It yeah. takes some practice and it takes implementing those systems, but yeah. it's definitely work it. Think of it as a new adventure. You know this is something that you guys can do, do together. Totally. Um, don't fight against each other. You know don't go. What is that? Salmon swim upstream. <laughs> you don't have to do that. It, make it, you know, just let everything flow and that, that way it'll go. And it's not about being right. Um, it's about teamwork. And then the great thing about it is we always say that real estate is the best way for average people to create wealth and to create their best life. And this is something that you can do together. Yep. And that that's awesome. So if you like Lara and you have that same, Laura or Lara, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. I'm sorry. Hopefully it's the right way. Um, don't give up hope. If you put the right systems in place and it can actually strengthen your relationship and make your business stronger and make you guys stronger yeah. as a team. There's no question about that. And also it can be a lot of fun. There are gonna be days you need to go to your separate corners. It's okay. Learn how to agree to disagree. That's, sometimes that's you're gonna, really good. Sometimes yeah. <laughs> you'll say, listen, we're gonna to have to agree to disagree on this. And as long as you agree to disagree, take your separate corners. And if you are the if you are the one that likes to bicker in the relationship, if you both like to, or if one of you likes to, shut your pie hole. You have to go to a separate corner and you have to sometimes shut your pie hole and let time come. Even if you feel like, I have a decision right now, that one decision will never change your life in one day. Take some time to breathe about the decision and don't bring your other garbage to, to the fight, right? Keep it separate. All right. Okay. Next question. Next question. Hi, Amber and Glenn. I love your workshops. Thank you both. Thank you for all that you do. Contrary to what you teach at the workshop, I gave the contractor $5,000 and now I haven't seen him for a week. <laughs> I am beyond- Sorry. <laughs> Don't ben, laugh. Been there, so go ahead. I am You're beyond pissed and worried. <clears throat> he just skipped town with my money and I won't see a lick of that money back or any work done on the house. I have a contract. How can I get my money back or work done? Please help Larry. All right. Larry is in the South where I grew up. Um, if I were in the South with you, I would say, bless your little heart and I'd give you a hug. <laughs> um, but here in New York where I've lived for over a decade now, we'd just say, suck it up and move on. 
So here's the bottom line, never get ahead of the work. Never let the money get ahead of the work. That's the number one thing you have to learn with dealing with contractors. Never let the money get ahead of the work because if the money gets ahead of the work, they can skedaddle and then you have nothing. And as far as your contract, there's legality versus reality. And I have, I have good news and bad news for you. The good news is you have a contract. The bad news is, well, the good news is you could win. If you went to court, you could totally win. The bad news is you'll never see a dollar and you'll waste a lot more money actually suing the person. A contract's really more of a formality to make sure that you both, you know, if people um, aren't gonna act with integrity, a piece of paper won't make them act with integrity, right? So make sure that you understand legality versus reality. Um, good chance that if he's gone and disappeared, he may never come back, right? That might happen. So um, again, you might take him to court, but you'll never see that money. So there's legality versus reality. Um, just don't get ahead of the money and that should never happen to you. Yep, so there are some steps you can take though. Number one, take charge of the job. Don't wait on this joker. I mean, he's not coming back. If he hasn't been there for a week and you haven't heard from him, move on and do it now. Don't wait till tomorrow. Do it right now. Yeah. Find another contractor, get him on the job. Don't give him money up front. There's no reason to do that. Um, kind of the same advice we gave Janice too. Take your medicine, swallow that pill, even though it's kind of hard and, and just move on. You're, you're going to swallow it eventually. So <clears throat> just swallow it sooner than later, yep. move on and be, take charge of your business. Exactly. Um, number three is learn from your mistake and don't let it happen again. Yep. You know, that definition of, in, definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting Spe different, different results. results. So don't do it again. Yep. Um, you know, we've certainly been guilty of giving contractors money up front. Yep. We, you know, it, it's hard, especially if you're a compassionate person, they, they give their sob stories and I've heard every single one of them that you could possibly imagine. And, you know, people might think I'm a little bit jaded or a, a little bit tough on it, but I've, I've just been jaded. We've been burned too many times yeah. and I just, I don't, I just don't buy it anymore. Yeah. Um, sometimes we, the, 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 when we've done it, it's been for the sake of trying to get the job done. Like the contractor has been there and you know, maybe he didn't manage his money very well on the job and he doesn't have enough to make payroll at the end of Friday. So sometimes yeah. for the sake of just trying to get the job done, we've given some money, but it almost always almost bites you always. in the butt. Almost, almost always. Almost always will bite you in the butt. So it's yeah. kind of like that 80s slogan, like drugs, just say no. <laughs> Yeah, I would agree. So, we, you know, when you are dealing, I'm thinking about a lot of our personal stories. Um, I have so many races through my head, I can't hardly even pick one. I know. Because we've learned so many ways over the years. But there's just been countless ways that at the end of a job, just like Amber said, we've given money to a contractor because they haven't managed their business correctly. It's not your job to manage their business. They say, well, I have to make payroll. It's not your job to make their payroll. It's your job to pay for work completed. It's their job to manage the job and have some reserves so they can make payroll. But if you have a contractor that lives paycheck to paycheck, that's very difficult. So try and find a contractor who does not live paycheck to paycheck and is not requiring your money, not requiring your money to make payroll. Because that puts them in a tough spot and it puts you in a tough spot. So try to avoid that before you go in. We've, we've lost money there, but we've certainly learned our lesson over the years and got much better at it. Yeah, and I was gonna say too, <clears throat> um, contractors, I think we've said this in other podcasts too, but it's worth repeating. Contractors by nature are very good at their job. They're good at their craft. They're good at construction, but they're not necessarily good businessmen. You know, you'll find very few that are good at both. They, yeah. they are out there, but it's a, it's a little more challenging. So by having a really detailed scope of work and um, an outlined payment schedule based on phases of the job, that kind of keeps everybody on the same page totally. and it's a huge help. Yep. So if, uh, you know, it sucks when, when things like this happen, but the best thing you can do is move on, minimize your losses and learn from it. Yeah, if you're like Larry, which uh, if you've been doing this long enough, you've dealt with this situation um, with a contractor, um, and if you haven't, you're going to, you're gonna, you're gonna encounter this problem or some version of this problem. So take control of the situation, take advice from what we just said to you today. We speak from years and years and years and years and years and years of experience with this. So it's probably the hard, people say, what's the hardest part about what you do? Dealing with contractors. Contractors, yeah, yep. you'll find that from anybody around the country that does this. But, but by having those systems in place, you're gonna minimize those headaches. Totally, good. So, so many good questions here. Let's do a recap. So I'll recap on Janice. So Janice had to get a certain sales price to, to break even. Um, remember, the market doesn't care what you have to pay, what you have to get for a house. It doesn't care what you're into the house for. It only pays what it feels the market is going to be worth. So either get out quickly or create a plan B with a different exit strategy that makes the deal work for you. Yep. All right. Lara and her husband are struggling to find their way as business partners and don't want to get divorced before they finish your first flip. Yep. So our advice to you is define your roles, support <clears throat> each other. By all means, support each other. 
um, come at things as a team instead of against each other. And most importantly, even though every day is not roses and sunshine, it's this not? can't, <laughs> contrary to popular belief, contrary to the way the TV shows make it look, yeah. um, don't forget to enjoy the journey and have fun creating the life that you dream of together. Yep. And we just talked about Larry, and Larry paid his contractor in advance. Um, um, he's considering... Uh, uh, buy, buy him a new cement uh, patio. So, um, you know, let's not kill anybody, right? Let's not do that. So, never get ahead of the work. Remember, there's legality versus reality, and legally you have a contract, but there's really no chance he'll ever probably come back. So, we talked about that. Learn from your mistake, take control of the job, and get someone else to finish the job ASAP. Lick your wounds, get through it, get that thing done. So guys, we love answering your questions. Like I said in the beginning, it lets us know, you know what's really out there, what people want to know, and we can create that value for you to keep listening. So keep those questions coming. So here's a little homework for you. Write down what you think you deserve uh, this coming year, right? What do you deserve this coming year? What do you want to deserve? What, what do you think you want to deserve or get five years from now? And then write down what you want to get 10 years from now. Start making some plans. Start laying them down there. Write down our names. Write down Glenn and Amber Schwarm because we want to help you reach those goals. Yep. So you have been listening to the Real Estate of Mind show. We are your hosts, Glenn and Amber Schwarm. If you have enjoyed this podcast, please make sure that you uh, give it a review on iTunes and please share it with anybody else that you think could get some information from it and glean some value from it. Um, find us on all of social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, at glennandamberschwarm.com. Glenn and Amber Schwarm. Yeah, well, <laughs> depends where you go, but you'll, you'll find us out there. So, so remember that everyday people really do create wealth through real estate investing. The only question is, will you be the next one? We'll see you next time. 